This is a Fox Sports presentation. The stakes are rising. Time is running out. It's almost October, baby. This is what it's all about on Fox Saturday Baseball. In Florida, Moises and the Marlins look primed for the playoffs. But Bobby Bo knows. And he won't forget. The mighty Mets may be down, but it ain't over yet. Tony and the Tigers are great. They roar into Camden to battle the birds. Priman and Higginson get it done at the plate. The Rip Man and Raffy have inspiration on their side as they eyeball the postseason with destiny on their minds. It's late September, baby. Time to get it done on the one and only Fox Saturday Baseball. Well, the Mets fans are hoping they'll get it done today as they face the fish and elimination in South Florida. The Marlins are moving closer to their first ever postseason. Last night, a couple of streaks were broken. One good, one bad. Ray Ordonez broke his dubious streak of at-bats without a hit. At 37, Don Zimmer and Tommy Agee had the previous mark at 34. And Charles Johnson's bid to go the entire year without a pass ball ended his first in 134 games last night. While the much improved Tigers play for their future today in Baltimore, the Orioles are playing for nothing less than a World Series title, something Eric Davis, Baltimore's emotional MVP, hopes for again this season. Welcome back to the Fox Television Center in Hollywood. It's the first weekend of fall. As we get set to play some classic ball, it's Fox Saturday baseball time. Hello again, everybody. I'm Chip Carey, joined by the ever bitter Steve. Psycho Lions, trouble in the Yankee locker rooms got you fired up this week. Well, if they just let the players play and let the oh, owners stay up in their again. luxury on, boxes man. like they belong. It's George Steinbrenner's team. He can do whatever he wants. If David Wells would throw a ball that would stay in the ballpark, he wouldn't have if a problem. If Steinbrenner would put more security out in right field, oh, routine please. pop flies wouldn't He's become a home run ball. I'm oh, telling you, and you want to piece of me? You're a big on. owners guy all the time. Bring it the on. only reason I don't drop is because I need a show host hey. down the stretch. I need a good one. I'll settle for you. I know one thing. If you take a swing at me, you will definitely miss. And how about George Steinbrenner? <laughs> he says, I want I want Holyfield next. Good thing it's not Mike Tyson. You wouldn't want to bite off more than you can chew, Mr. <laughs> Steinbrenner. All right, last night's late action will start in Los Angeles. Calm down over there. The Dodgers hosting the Rockies first place in the NL West on the line for L.A. Their bullpen lets them down late as Jeff Reed continues to kill Los Angeles. Four home runs out of his 16 on the year come against the Dodgers. Two last night, 6-4. to four, The Rockies beat the Dodgers at Chavez Ravine. So what do the Giants do? Barry Bonds, says Kapaya. He hits his 36th home run. Three now in three days. The Giants beat San Diego 7-4. to four. Tony Gwynn playing with a blood clot in his leg as the Giants now lead the Dodgers by a full game in the West. Colorado is still six back. The Dodgers bullpen this week has given them all kinds of problems. And look out, Barry Bonds on one of those streaks. A lot of pitching problems right now with the Dodgers. And I think the interpreter for Hideo Nomo, when he said, we've got to overthrow the Giants, he took it literally through that <laughs> wild pitch all the way to the screen. That was the winning run. It really cost him. And Bobby Bonds helping his son Barry. When Barry gets hot, he can carry a ball club. Yeah, he can. After that first home run, three and three games, he did the pirouette, pirouette around there, dancing around. I couldn't believe the Dodgers didn't drill him his next at-bat. I like the pirouette. There's nothing wrong with the pirouette. Yeah. Nothing wrong with Ken Go Griffey Jr. Studio. And Mark McGuire as well. They are chasing that fabled mark of Roger Maris. 61 homers in 1961. And last night, both men continued to take a swing at that marvelous mark. Let's start with McGuire in Pittsburgh for the Cardinals. He's having a heck of a year. 54 home runs. One of the best right-handed low ball hitters in the game. First man in baseball history, 20 or more home runs with two different teams in the same season. 6-5 Cardinals win it in 11. How about Ken Griffey Jr. in Oakland in the ninth? Bang, number 53 for Griffey. Seattle wins that game 9-4 over Oakland. Their magic number in the AL West now is three. In case you're wondering who has to do what, Junior needs eight home runs in his last eight games to tie Maris. Mark McGuire needs seven in his last nine. Not exactly unreachable, but it's going to be tough. Well, I think it's unreachable, but it's been a great race to watch. These guys have really lit up the, the, the games with those home runs. How about Mark McGuire staying in St. Louis, taking a lot less money than he could have got on the open market? Who says that a town can't win the heart of a player? He stayed because of those fans yeah, in St. Louis. Yeah, he said, I was overwhelmed, and it's a great sign that a ball player following his heart and not necessarily his pocketbook. He took a lot less money in St. Louis, and he's donating a million a year to found the Mark McGuire Foundation. That is a great story. Well, while McGuire and Griffey chase Maris, let's take a look at what else is happening in the news. Baseball's owners left Atlanta this past week without voting on realignment and acting commissioner Bud Sittig now hopes to get a deal done by October 15th, but still no concrete
plan is in place and whether or not a deal will be done in time for next year's schedule to be put out remains to be seen. All right, folks, time now for our Fox Watch. Let's get started back east in South Florida. Tom Brenneman and Bob Brindley are on the beach for the Mets and the Marlins. Hello, guys. Ah, uh, yes, how can you beat it? Many of the youngsters enjoying the Atlantic Ocean, and many later today will watch the Mets and the Florida Marlins. And certainly a historic day today for this Florida franchise. Their magic number is down to three to clinch the wild card spot. And Bobby, they're getting jacked up for the postseason. Well, they started last night. They camped outside Pro Player Stadium waiting to get the postseason tickets. You know, normally you camp out for tickets. You need a sleeping bag, a thermos of hot chocolate, but not here in Miami. You need a lounge chair, some sunscreen, and maybe a Jimmy Buffett CD. Not a bad idea. And they are lined up for those tickets. First time they've ever had them printed for the Florida Marlins. Right now, let's send it back to Chip Carey and Steve Lyons in Hollywood. Hey Bob, thanks a lot. The advertising slogan for the Marlins all year long has said, be there when it happens. Perhaps today will be the day as they seek their first ever postseason berth. But let's turn our attention back to Baltimore. The Orioles, a team that's going to go as far as Cal Ripken Jr. can carry him. And right now, his back is laboring. Well, he's three for his last 33. His back's been killing him for almost two months. Now, they have their best opportunity to win a World Series since way back in 1983. They've got to take it. And if that means sitting down Cal Ripken for a few games, they have to do it. You have to put team goals over personal. Records. Ripken says he plays because he loves the game, not because he loves the streak. There has been talk about him playing the DH. We'll see if that happens here in the final week plus of the regular season. And of course, Cal Ripken's a clutch player, but this is the time of year, Steve, when teams really look for those clutch guys, and no other position in the game requires more chances in the clutch than that bullpen closer. Yeah, the closer. Like, they've been closing out games <laughs> this year. We've seen more blown saves than at any time in baseball. Anybody could do this job. Fire Marshal Bill. <laughs> you know, the game of baseball has changed so much over the last 10 or 15 years. I mean, I can remember guys like Fingers and Gossage and Lyle who used to come in and dominate for two or three innings to get their save. Now we have specialists that play. We have guys that come in and only throw one inning. Sometimes they come in to get one out. Sometimes they throw one pitch to get a save. I mean, is it me or has the save now become overrated? The save is, is, is uh, uh, maybe not as, you know, quality as it used to be, but I respect the job. I have to do it. You know, I'm the guy that's nervous. It's the one stat in both leagues that you can only be as good as your team around you to get you that opportunity. Because I think it takes a special cat to get those three. You know, a lot of guys can get 25, 24, but they can't get 26, 27. Three-run lead, you bring your closer in, that's not a tough save. This? This is a tough save. Well, let me tell you how things have changed. Check out my old teammate, White Sox stopper Bobby Thigpen. In 1990, he set the record for most saves in a season with 57. But only 29 of those 57 could be considered quality saves, in which the tying runs were either on base or at bat when he came into the game. In addition, 44 times he came into the game with nobody on base. Definitely save inflation. See, Lisa here is like a setup guy. She's making me look good. I get all the glory, she does all the work. You know, we don't get much publicity. The only time we really get noticed is when we mess up. It's a very safe feeling when you have a, a great setup man, especially a setup man that can get righties and lefties out. I mean, that guy is worth his weight in gold. A lot of times the game is saved before the game is saved. In other words, the game is saved in this, maybe the sixth inning some nights, or the eighth, or what have you, and then you just come out there and get three outs. But you know what? It might not even be the closer's fault. I think you have to blame the managers for some of this specialization. Case in point, 93 World Series, Phillies, Blue Jays, game six. Now, Mitch Williams saved 43 games for the Phillies that season, but Roger Mason, David West, and Larry Anderson threw three scoreless innings leading up to the ninth. And then here comes Williams. Now, he was the loser in game four. We knew he wasn't going to hold the lead, and you know what happened. You know why managers use their closer in that way? It's to save their own butt. If Jim Fagosi leaves Larry Anderson in that ball game and he gives up the home run to Joe Carter, we blame Jim Fagosi. But by playing by the book and bringing your closer in, the guy who had 43 saves on the season, when he gives up the home run, we blame Mitch Williams. Hmm. All right, I'll admit it. Every ball club needs a guy who wants the ball in the ninth inning to close out a ball game for you. But what are the traits that really make that guy? See, I think you have to have that certain type of makeup for it. How about this? This could be the right makeup. What do you think? Brutal. 
It takes a lot of nerve is what it does because it's a hell of a responsibility because when you're on the other end of it and you lose, it is unbelievable, especially in a playoff game or in, God forbid, the World Series. This is going to be a home run. Unbelievable. A home run for Gibson. I don't believe what I just saw. I'll tell you what it takes to be a good closer. you got to have a lot of guts, and that's about it. Ray Miller, pitching coach of the Orioles, great story. He said in the old military situation, when the captain would find an enemy spy, they'd take five guys into the back room. They'd beat him up until he could get all the information out of him. They'd come back and they'd say, hey, he's bleeding. We got all the info. And then the captain would say, here's a gun. Somebody go back there and shoot him. The guy that goes back and shoots him, he's your closer. Nice job, Raggedy Ann. All right, tomorrow we've said J.P., Terry, Howie, and Ronnie on the road to Green Bay, where they'll be live with America's most watched pregame show. All the fun starts at noon, 9 Pacific, right here on Fox.